can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore We shall sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of the blessed And our spirits shall sorrow no more Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by by, We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by by, We shall meet on that beautiful shore Bound 
bountiful Father above. We will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our day. In the sweet, in the sweet by, and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. By and by, in the sweet, in the sweet by, and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet, in the sweet by, and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. By and by, in the sweet by and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. sa lahat po ng ating viewers at sa lahat po ng ating mga top 
Man, huh? And hopefully, the, ito pong ating Bible study will be a blessing to you and will be additional information to you for your spiritual growth. Okay, so sa lahat po ng ating mga kapatiran sa iba't ibang lugar, especially sa ibang bansa, no? magandang magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Again, this is Pastor Jonathan Pascual coming to you live from King James Bible Baptist Church here at San Vicente, Tarlac City. Okay, with my staff right now, uh, minus one. I don't know kung darating po si Brother June, but uh, hopefully na hanggang po matapos ay uh, wala po tayong interruption and hopefully ng ating pong internet will be very good tonight. Okay, plus the audio, of course. Okay, so ngayon po ay dadap po tayo sa ating understanding about the Bible. So we're going to deal with what? With the four words that describe the character of the Bible, God's Word. Okay, four words that describe the character of the Bible. Okay, so ito ay we're going to deal with revelation, inspiration, preservation, and illumination. All right. Okay, so tayo po ay dumako muna sa panalangin. Let's ask one of our staff here to pray. Brother Mike Abito. Let's pray, brother. Let's pray. Father Lord, we are nothing without you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we are asking you, Panginoon, to be with us and guide us, Lord, throughout the entire study of this uh, inspiration and preservation yes, of your words. Father God, this is your words. That's why we are asking permission, Lord, to teach it Amen. and to share it, Lord, so others will grow in their faith and so we can defend what is right about the Bible, O God. Panginoon, we also pray for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for our teacher, Pastor Jonathan Pascual, as he uttered this uh, uh, message. Amen. And we also pray, Lord, na yung mga makikinig, mga viewers and participants, we pray, O Lord, na open yung po yung kanilang understanding, kanilang hearts, Lord, Para po maunawan, ito pong discussion po na ito. Father God, we also pray for our internet connection. Yes, Father, God. Please, God, we beg, O oh God, so matuloy po namin ito ng maayos without any yes. interruption. God, we pray na bigyan mo po kami ng good signal hanggang sa matapos po ang discussion po na ito. Panginoon, tulungan mo po kami. Lord, iniling din namin na bigyan mo kami ng humble heart. Humility of spirit, Lord, sa ganun, Panginoon, patuloy namin kayo yes, makilala at may apply sa buhay namin, Panginoon, na naman po matut mga natututuran po namin. Lord, ito po kami dalangin sa pangalan po ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Alright, so sa ating study is how you're going to understand the Bible, no? And speak about the Bible, speak about the, the Word of God. The amen. Of the Bible, amen. The pure, perfect, and valid yep. Word of God. Okay. Alright, so... So these uh, these words, which describes the character of the scripture, are uh, this revelation. We have the preservation, the inspiration, and the illumination. Okay. So we'll start with the uh, the word revelation. Okay. When we talk about revelation, hindi lamang po ito yung isang aklat sa Bible, no? Na ang title po niya ay revelation. But uh, the word revelation means God has spoken. Ang Diyos ay nagsalita. Revelation means an uncovering or a revealing. So, ipagpapahayag, no? Ipagpapalam, no? uncovering. So, at the very beginning of the Bible, we have what? God revealed Himself in Genesis that He is an intelligent creator, Okay? And he created intelligent creatures. Those are mankind. No? These are the mankind. For our own observation, we know that intelligent beings communicate with one another. Therefore, it is reasonable to expect that God has set out to communicate with us. So, isang ability na binigay ng Diyos sa atin as an intelligent being is what? Communication. No? Communication. The Bible indicates that he has done so by two methods. How God revealed himself. How God revealed himself, number one, through nature. Alright? So, yung revelation ay nangyari sa pamagitan po, number one, uh, nature. Alright? Nature. Through nature. Ang tawag po dito is general revelation. General revelation. His creation declares certain things about God, 
without using words. Uh, may I ask uh, someone to read Psalms 19 verse 1 to 3. Psalms 19 verse 1 to 3. Meron pa ba tayong additional mic kapatid? Okay, Psalms 19 verses 1 to 3. Okay. Psalms 19 verses 1 to 3. Psalms chapter number 19 verses 1 to 3. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Amen. You see the word there, okay? His creation declares certain things about God. So kapag tumingin tayo sa nature, magita po natin, God is will, no? Ang Diyos ay totoo and He is existing. Without using words, we can see through creation that God is revealing Himself. Another verse, Romans 1 verse 19 to 20. Romans 1 verse 19 to 20. So yung first word na, ginaga, na ating pag is about uh, revelation, the word revelation. Okay. Romans 1 verse 19 to 20. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen, amen. Alright, so creation will speak to us his existence. Alright, man has largely rejected God's revelation in nature. By doing so, they reveal themselves to be less than wise. Alam niyo po ba na ang sabi ng Panginoon doon sa mga taong ayaw maniwala na may Diyos sa pamagitan ng nilikha ng Panginoon? Ito po sabi ng Bible, Romans 1 verse 21 to 23. Romans 1 verse 21 to 23. Romans 1 verse 21 to 23. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful but become vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and for food and beasts, and creeping things. Amen. You see that? So they rejected the Lord, so they became what? Less than wise. They became fools. Alright, so yung pangalawa po, it's true nature, second is beyond nature. It is what we call a supernaturally, supernaturally. Supernaturally. So this is uh, beyond nature. Right? So first, true nature, second, beyond nature, which is supernaturally. Through the words of human language, which is what we call specific revelation, as recorded in his written word. God declares for far more than he, we could understand by observing creation alone. Psalms 19 verse 7 to 14. Praises like that saith the Lord. God says, or the equivalent of more than 2,500 times in the Old Testament. The New Testament also claims to be God's word. For example, in John 17 14. Okay, check natin po mga patid. So makita po natin na, na God, okay, as recorded in his written word, God declares far more than we could understand by observing creation alone. Praises like the saint the Lord. Egapir po yan sa, sa Old Testament 2,500 times. Okay? John 17, 14. John 17, 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world. Even as I am, not of the word. Well, right. Okay. Another verse, 2 Timothy 3.16, sabi ng Bible dito, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. Alright, so we have also 1 John 5, verse 9 to 12. Ibasa lang kapatid. 1 John 5, verse 9 to 12. So this is what we call uh, a specific revelation. It is a supernatural. It's it's beyond nature. Okay. First John five verse nine to twelve. First John 12, five verse nine to twelve. 
If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Amen. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that not the Son of God hath not life. Alright, so you will see that connected to John chapter 1 verse number 18. Okay, so ito po yung beyond nature. So dalawa po, mga kapatid, uh, method na ginawa ng Panginoon para i-reveal ang kanya sarili. Number one, through creation and beyond creation or beyond nature. And this is too supernatural. Alright, so i-reveal ang Panginoon ang kanya sarili at nagsalita siya sa mga tao. Okay? God has spoken to us by means of what we call progressive revelation. Progressive revelation. Alright? So, Progressive Revelation. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Okay? Progressive Revelation is means like this. Kapag ka nasa school ka, di ba? Meron ka teacher. Hindi niya kagad nasabihin sa isang araw yung yung laman ng isang aklat. No? So, he's not going to cover a year's material in the first lesson. No? God gave his word a little at a time over the course of centuries. Kaya nga po ang Bible eh, uh, umabot ang ilang libong ilang libong taon para makomplete ito. Okay? So, isipin nyo po, no? From the time of Christ, from Isaiah to the time of Christ. O, yun na lang, ano, yun na lang, from the time of Christ up to our time, no? That's, that's more than 2,000 years. At uh, makita natin, nag-start po ang writing sa time ni Moses up to, up to, up to Christ. Ito po ang sabi ng uh, record natin. Uh, so it was written uh, when Moses write uh, Exodus about 1,500 B.C. So that's 1,500 years before Christ. So wala pang susulat ng New Testament. So it was a progressive revelation. <coughs> God gave his word a little at the time over the course of centuries and progressive revelation does not imply that new books are being added to the Bible today. The final chapter of the Bible warns against additions. Revelation 22 verse 18 and 19. Some folks regard other books as having scriptural authority but invariably these books fail the test of what? Canonicity. Alright, so canonicity is a standard rule ng mga books. Alright? So, bawal magdagdag, bawal magbawas. But there is a progressive revelation. Progressive revelation. Hindi ibig sabihin natin na pagkatapos po ng uh, revelation, meron na namang, ano, meron na namang books na lilitaw. So, it should pass the test of canonicity. God has revealed all that can reveal. Okay? God has has God revealed all that can be revealed? Alright, hindi po. There is much more that He will reveal. When Christ returns to earth, according to 1 John 3 verse 2 and 1 Corinthians 13 12. Alright? So, i-reveal pa ng Diyos. May mga bagay pang i-reveal ang Panginoon pag dumating si Cristo. The last book of the Bible gives us a foreview of the further revelation of Jesus Christ. At the end of the age, until then, the Lord has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness in the knowledge that we have concerning him through his word in the present age. Okay, 2 Peter 1 3. Okay. 2 Peter 1 3. Okay. Second Peter 1 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Alright, so what we have today, ito yung Word of God, ito yung Bible. Ito po yung kailangan natin sa life, sabi ng Bible, and Godliness. So what we have is Genesis to the book of Revelation. Ito yung revelation, revelation ng Diyos sa atin. Okay, now, now. Pero kapag dating ng Panginoon, God is going to reveal more about Him. About Him. So, as of 
now, in this present time. Ito yung Bible enough na para sa atin. Okay? So, pagkat sa kanyang pagbabalik, yun yung time na God will extend His revelation of Himself. Now, check po natin 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 and 1 Corinthians 13, 12. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2 Beloved, now we are we now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when we shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is all right so meron pang revelation po na makita natin sa future sa pagdating ng Panginoon 1 Corinthians 13:12 So ngayon kung ano yung kailangan natin sa buhay life and godliness Ito po yung binigay ng Diyos sa atin. Okay? According to 2 Peter 1.3. But there will be more of revelation when Jesus Christ will come. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but when shall I know even as also I am known. So it is clear that the Bible we have today is God's revelation. So, nireveal ang Diyos sa kanyang sarili through nature, and then nireveal niya supernaturally. At ang kanyang revelation is progressive. Progressive, yung sabihin po, hindi ka agad ipinigay sa isang sitting lang. No? Uh, makita natin, ang pagkasulat ng Biblia ay takes, uh, sabi nga ng, sabi nga ng uh, yung, yung date, sinulat po ni Moses ang kanyang, ang kanyang aklat. Okay? Yung Pentateuch niya, that's about 1,490 plus uh, BC, as before Christ. And then, after that, Christ, time, and then yung Gospels na sulat. And then after that, about 100 years from Christ up to the end, up to the last New Testament books. Okay, yung first century, malang po natapos mga kapatid, yung New Testament. So, you're going to see that's almost 1,000 uh, 600 years na complete ang buong Bible. So it's progressive. Okay? Progressive po. Hindi po minsan para bang nag-ipon siya ng lahat ng kanyang writing, writers at authors ng mga books. Then, oh, isulat yun ito ha. Pagkatapos itong conference natin, kailangan. Meron na tayong 66 books. Hindi po nangyari. Yun. Okay? Alright? Okay. <clears throat> now, from eternity past to eternity future, from eternity past to eternity future, God's word is forever settled in heaven. According to Psalms 119, verse 89. Sige, Brad. So, pag sinabi natin eternity past, okay, ito yung past, ito yung future, right? Eternity past, eternity future. So, yung word of God, from end to end, okay? Sabi ng Bible, this is settled in heaven. Forever. In heaven. Forever. Forever. Sabi yung sinulat na ng Diyos ang simula hanggang wakas. So tignan mo na lang kung saan mo ilalagay yung sarili mo dyan. Ha? Alam mo na. Ha? Alam na this. Ha? So ibig sabihin kung ikaw ay iaayos mo ang buhay mo at i-inline mo sarili mo sa Bible, okay? na wala mo na kung ano ang future ng buhay mo. Okay? Because God's word is forever settled in heaven. So, hindi na po mababago ito. Fixed na ito. Right? Psalms 119 verse 89. Long before the first man was created, God spoke to Adam. And before he caused a word of scripture to be written, his purposes were established. Before man fell into sin, God's plan of salvation is in place. Alright? It is in place. Okay? Uh, you go to uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 18 to 20. First Peter 1, verse 18 to 20. The Bible says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was for ordering before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. All right, you see that? Okay. So you will see that also in Revelation 13:8. 8. 
Revelation 13.8. Okay? Ito pa sabi ng Bible. Revelation 13.8. Sabi po niya dito, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Ang ibig sabihin po noon, long before the first man, Long before the first man was created, before God spoke to Adam, and before he caused the word of scripture to be written, his purposes were established before men came to sin. So God's plan of salvation was in place. Okay. Now, long after he has put the present certain aside, or creation aside, he has put the present creation aside, his word will endure. And his revelation will continue. Okay? Sige brad, Hebrews 1 verse 10 and 11. So, kung ito ay 400 BC, ay 4000 BC, so nung uh, nagsimula siya ng nagsula, is 1500 BC. Alright? And after the cross, natapos po yung uh, scripture ng New Testament, Okay, so this is uh, around, this is the time na nagsulat. Ito yung, ano, ito yung, uh, ang time na ito, ito yung inspiration of writers. Na? So dito, in-inspire ang mga writers. Okay, ito, ito yung time ng inspiration. Pero yung kanilang pong ano, yung kanilang uh, declaration, <clears throat> yung kanilang revelation, nag-start na po dito. Alright, eternity pass. Pero makita ninyo, Yung sinulat po ay nag-start po silang nagsulat 1,500 BC at natapos yung New Testament around 100 AD. So ito po yung time, ito yung period ng inspiration. Pero yung kanilang knowledge, okay, yung knowledge po nila is from end to end. Okay? So shorter po yung time ng pagsulat compared doon po sa length ng kanilang pong revelation. Uh, Hebrews 1 verse 10 to 12 Hebrews 1 verse 10 to 12 And thou Lord in the beginning hast, hast laid the foundation of the earth And the heavens are the works of thy hands They shall perish but thou remainest And they all shall wax old as doth a garment Alright so his word will what? Endure So yung natapos po dito Okay Ang mga writers Inspiration of the writers Right? Yung sinulat po nila dito, okay, will what? Will endure up to the end. Right? So makita natin po, yung word of God, hindi lamang po siya dito, hindi lamang po siya dito powerful sa time na ito. Alright? Nakikita pa ito na? Ha? Okay? So, hindi lang po siya powerful sa time na ito. Alright? So, hindi lang po siya powerful sa time na ito. Hindi lang po nalimit yung power ng Word of God sa time na ito. So, makita natin, yung revelation ng Diyos, hindi lang po siya dito. Kundi siya po yung tumulak from end to end. That's the reason why the Bible speaks of what? The beginning and the end. Pero sinulat siya within the span of time. 1,000 600 years. It's a long time. Pero yung kanila pong, yung kanilang extension, right, is from end to end. Kaya nga, binagit sa Revelation 13.8, yung lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And then Hebrews 1 verse 10 to 12, yung word of God will endure hanggang sa Hanggang matapos na lahat. Up to eternity. The word of God will endure up to eternity. Okay? Kaya sabi ng Bible, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord. Nakita niyo yung forever? So yung nagawa pala nila dito, okay, na nireveal ng Diyos, yung nagawa ng mga writers dito, will be what? Settled in heaven. For what? Forever. Okay? 
I so hope you understand that. Ang susunod po is what we call the inspiration. The inspiration. God has spoken through human writers. Okay, 2 Timothy 3.16. Second Timothy 3.16 For all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is for defeatable, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Alright? Okay. So, tandaan po natin, nasulat po ang Bible through human writers. Okay? Siguro kung namili sa angels ang, ang, uh, ang sumulat, hindi natin po maitindihan. Lalong lalo na kung hayop ang sumulat ha? Ay lalong hindi na natin maintindihan okay? Kaya uh, yung sinabi nila na uh, Yung mga kritik ng Bible Sinasabi na oh sulat lang ng tao yan Totoo po Kasi nga kung sinulat siya ng kabayo Hindi po natin maintindihan okay? So dapat talaga sulat ng tao Pero hindi lang po basta sinulat po ng tao okay? Kaya po papasok po dito yung tinatawag nilang Inspiration okay? Inspiration so, inspiration is Theopneostos. Okay? Theopneostos. Okay? Ang ibig sabihin po ng Theopneostos, which literally means Theo, God, and then Neopto, Neostos is what? God or God breath. Okay? And so, God breath. So, ito po ay sinulat po through the inspiration of God, which is the meaning of, the meaning of that is God breath. Okay? Inigan ng Diyos. Theop, theop neostos, okay, in Greek. Okay, now, since scripture comes out from God, it, ex it expresses his thoughts, not merely the thoughts of human writers. So, sabi nga ng Bible, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, Isaiah 55 verse 8. So, furthermore, yung thoughts ng Diyos, inamit, yun ang inilagay niya sa tao. Okay, now, since scripture is God breath, or God breath, it is somehow alive and infused with power. So, dahil po ito ay alive, okay? Dahil ito ay God breath. So, it is alive and what? Powerful. Makapangyarihan. Kaya may buhay po ito, kapatid, ha? At makapangyarihan. Kaya ngayon ang purpose po ng inspiration. You go to uh, Hebrews 4 verse 12. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the thunder, dividing piercing even, piercing even the, the, the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Alright, thank you Brad. Now you will see also in another verse in the Bible, 2 Peter 1, verse 20 and 21. Tignan ninyo, pansinin ninyo. Kung yun ay thoughts ng Diyos, okay? Paano ngayon naging, naging instrument, okay, ang tao? Okay, look at this one. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. 2 Peter 20, 21. Knowing this verse that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, yeah. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You see that? They were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they were moved. These holy men of God are the writers. At ang sabi ng Bible, they were holy men. In the sense that they were set apart for God's purposes. Sila po'y kinuha ng Diyos. They were set apart for the purpose of writing His words. Okay? Now listen. If the writers are considered themselves sinners and unworthy to be used by God, like Moses and David faithfully recorded their own failures, okay? What happened to them? Why they were called? They, well, how they got used? How God used them? Now, ito po ang ginawa ng Diyos. God supplied their lack. Remember this. Now, hindi natin kaya lahat. So, ang ginawa ng Diyos, okay? Ginamit ang mga holy men ito in spite of the fact they are sinners, kung ano ang kulang nila, yun ang tinagdagan ng Diyos. God supply what they lack. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, but my God shall supply all your need. 
he moved on their hearts by his spirit in such a way that they said what he wanted to be said. Okay? So, sinabi ko niya sa kanila at sila minug ng Holy Ghost, of course, and then they wrote his words. Okay? Now, God expressed himself even though their weaknesses, even through their weaknesses and emotional highs and lows. Alright? Check po natin. Ang, ito po yung mga uh, makita natin uh, mga kanila po mga experiences ng mga tao ito. Check natin po ito sa Exodus 4 verse 10 to 15. Okay? So you will see that God supplied their luck. No? Because in spite of the fact that they are sinners, you will see that God used them. And God even called them holy men of God. Exodus 4 verse 10 to 15. Exodus 4 verse 10 to 15, the Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the singing, or the blind? Have not the I, Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with my with thy mouth, mm -hmm. and teach thee what thou shalt say. Wow. And he said, O my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levites thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart, and thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with he, with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. Oh, mira, no? Pangal pa si Moses, hindi ako ilipo with Lord. Okay? Ginamit siya ng Panginoon. Alright? Now you see Jeremiah 1, verse 4 to 9. Jeremiah 1, chapter 1, verse 4 to 9. Let's see Jeremiah here. Okay, this is how God inspired uh, the Bible. He used men to write his word. So, it is what? It is alive and powerful. So it's God breath. God breath. Okay, skip it. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1, verse 4 to 9. Jeremiah 1, verse 4 to 9. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said, I, a Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Yeah. Verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my word in thy mouth. Alright, check po natin, isa pang verse. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Jeremiah 20, verse 9, the Bible says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, yeah. and I could not say, stay. Alright, so, yan ang daylang kung bakit uh, inamit sila ng Diyos kahit they lack something, no? Inamit sila ng Panginoon. So, holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, mga human writers dyan, Kaya makita ninyo, nakadix yung, yung thoughts ng Diyos doon sa sino sila. Okay, sino sila. Ha? Thoughts ng Diyos, God Diyos, who they are. Ha? Parang tayo, no? Paano tayo gagamitin ng Panginoon sa ating mga mahal sa buhay? Paano tayo gagamitin ng Panginoon sa generation natin? Iba yung mga taong ginamit ng Diyos sa ibang generation, sa generation natin ngayon. So, how God use us according to how Yung, yung, yung frame work 
All right? Yung ating uh, yung ating character, yung ating build up, do yung gagamitin ng Panginoon Diyos. Now, there were two periods of inspiration. Two periods of inspiration. Okay, makita natin itong first period na ito. Okay? Yung pong time ng Old Testament. See that? That's the first period of inspiration. Okay? So, there were two periods of inspiration as directed by the Holy Spirit. Moses recorded the things which had been revealed in prior years. Alright? So, we'll see. <coughs> ang record ni, ang record ni uh, Moses, alright? Prior years. As from Adam up to, alright, up to his time. Okay? Right? Subsequent prophets wrote as Holy Spirit put them and the Old Testament was completed during the ministry of Ezra. Okay? So sa Old Testament, makita natin na ito ay sinulat yung sinulat ni Moses from Adam to around the, his time and then yung completion ng Old Testament sa time pa ng, ni Ezra. No? Following that, there was 400 periods period of silence mula po doon sa time okay, yung pinaka last na, na book as we have studied yesterday yesterday no? yung pinaka last ay yung Malakai, right? okay from that time there are about 400 years of what? silence years. okay 400 years of silence from Malakai. okay when there was no word from the Lord according to Micah 3 verse 5 to 7 Amos 8 verse 11 to 12. The silence is broken by the first of light at the first coming of Christ. Isaiah 9 verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 6 to 7. Matthew 4 verse 12 to 17. Jesus himself did not write a page of scripture. However, the New Testament was completed within 60 years following the Lord's death, resurrection, and ascension as the Holy Spirit moved the apostles to write as Jesus foretold. John 16, verse 12 to 15. Jesus and the apostles attributed through, our, through authorship of the scripture to the Holy Spirit. Okay? So nakita po natin, dalawang beses po yan, ang inspiration niya. Yung time na sinusulat ni Moses, okay? At saka yung iba pang mga prophets, ang Old Testament. Okay? Yun ang first inspiration. And then the next is the New Testament. Okay? The New Testament. After the death of Christ, up to the last apostle. Okay. Now, the authorship, right? Yung authorship, yung pinaka-author daw nito for 1,600 years, ang pinaka-author nito ay walang iba kundi ang Holy Spirit. So, the author of the book, the Bible, is the Holy Spirit. Alright? Kaya nga, ito yung salitang inspiration comes from the word spirit there. Okay. So, Jesus himself did not write a page of scripture. However, the New Testament was completed within 60 years following the Lord's death, resurrection, and ascension as the Holy Spirit moved the apostles to write as Jesus has had foretold. So, pagkita natin ang mga writers dito ay ang mga apostles. Ang writers naman dito ay yung mga prophets. Nakuha ninyo? Okay. So, ang, ang Holy Spirit siya po yung author. Ha? Huh? Rather than the whole human writers, totoo po na may mga human writers, mga tagasulat. Pero ang author talaga nito, kayo yung nagpapasulat nito, ay walang iba kundi ang Holy Spirit. Now, check natin po, Mark 12, verse 36, pakibasa lang kapatid. So, hindi pala tama pa, sir, yung terminology na ito yung author na itong book na ito, si David. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Writer lang pala dito. Writer, writer. Right. Tama yun, brother. Mark 12, verse 36. Mark 12, verse 36. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Amen. Alright, good. So, our Acts 1, 16. Acts 1, 16. Acts 1, 16, the Bible says, Men and brethren, this scripture must need have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Alright, so so that you know po ito mga to, and I note this to pa po yung mga verse. Acts 4, 24 to 25, Hebrews 3, 7, and Hebrews 10, 
verse 15 to 16. That will show you that the author of the Bible is not human author. It's not a human author. It is the Holy Spirit. So God only used human writers to write his books. Okay? From a study of what the Bible says about itself, we understand that inspiration is what? Verbal. Verbal. Ang ibig sabihin po ng verbal words. God spoke to them. Then they wrote what God wants that them what God wanted them to write. Okay? Pag sinabi natin plenary, it means the whole. Lahat ng mga gustong sabihin ng Diyos, sinulat po nila. The whole. And pag sinabi natin infallible, we are talking about a word means without error. So we have right now the yep. words, yeah, the whole, uh, the whole words of an infallible God. So we have an infallible words. Amen. Amen. See? Okay. So we have what? An inspired Bible is given by inspiration of God and it is a God's revelation of His will, His works, and His person. Kaya nga, pag nagbabasa tayo ng Bible, anong makita natin? Ang Diyos. Okay? Kaya nga kapag ka inalispong sarili mo ba? sa Bible, anong mangyari sa sa'yo? It will become what? It will become worldly, it will become wicked, evil. Pag nilapit mo sarili mo sa Bible, you will become godly sapagkat nalalapit ka sa Diyos. Amen. Okay, now, so the verbal inspiration means that every word is exactly where and what God wants it to be. Ang ibig sabihin po ng verbal, inspiration means that every word is exactly where and what God wants it to be. Okay, so ito po yung word natin ha. We have what we call verbal. Alright, verbal. Plenary. And infallible. Verbal. Plenary and infallible. Okay. Something that God inspired just the thoughts and concept, con concepts. Ito po yung mali, na? Ang sabi ng iba, eh, thoughts and concepts lang ang inspired ng Diyos. But we need to remember that, that su successful communication of thoughts and concepts require what? Words. Hindi ka pwedeng magkaroon ng thoughts at concept kung walang words. Kaya nga, words ang binigay ng Panginoon. Words of God. Kaya nga, Bible, words of God. Hindi thoughts and message and concept. Choose the wrong words and your thoughts may be misunderstood. <clears throat> Choose the wrong words. Sama yun. Verbal inspiration does not require that God dictated His words to men. Sometimes, sometimes, He did according to the Ten Commandments, no? Exodus 20 verse 1. So, sinabi ng Diyos kay Moses. But usually, as we observed earlier, He used men in their weakness and diversity. Some well-educated writers used very proper classical language, while others, like Peter, the fisherman, seemed to struggle with grammar. If God had dictated, He would expect His literary, literary style to be constant. Instead, God, in His infinite wisdom, and power spoke through many styles. May pong style po. Yet with exactly the right words. Okay? Jesus said that God's word is accurate down to the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay? Sabi niya, jot. Ginamit niya jot. And then what? Tito. Ayan po yung nakita natin sa Matthew 5 verse number 18. A proper understanding of a passage often hinges on a single word. Its tense or its number. Singular or plural. Examples, the word am or I am. Yan nandun sa I am. I am. Not was. In Matthew 22 verse 32. Okay? Hindi niya sinabing uh, was. Tignan ninyo ha. Yan yung, yung, yung mga yung mga inilalagay niya mga single word. Look at this one. Sabi ng Panginoon, yun nga ng chat at titil eh. Mahalaga na. Eh yung pang words Oh. Pang words, ha? O, tingnan po ninyo, ha? Even yung mga ginagamit siya, mga uh, verb, linking verb. Okay? Tingnan po ninyo, no? Use the word. You, you're going to see the word am here. In Matthew 22, 30. Pakibasa lang, brad. Matthew 22, 30. Matthew. 
Faccio credito 3. Grande mo, ha? Uh, take note this word, ha? Mahalaga po ito. Matthew 22, 30. 32. 32. Matthew 22, 32. 30, 32. 32 lang. 22, 32. I am the God for Abraham and the God of Isaac and for the God of Jacob. God is not the Lord. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You see that? Okay. Pagkita nyo, ang ginamit po niya doon, na word is what? Okay? Ang ginamit po niyang word doon ay M. M. Okay? Para mag-present yun. Sabi niya, ako. Ako. Present. I am. Hindi niya sinabing I was. I am. Alright? That means that Jesus Christ is what? The Lord. The Lord, the present Lord. Okay? Now, so ginamit po rin niya yung word na Lord. Okay? Sa Matthew 22 verse 41 to 46. Ginamit po niya yung word na Lord. Okay? So that connects him to the word am. Yung I am. Hindi niya sinabing I was. And he connected that to the Lord word. The word Lord. Okay? Now, that shows that Jesus Christ is siya mismo nagsabing ako ay Diyos. Tama? Hindi niya sinabing, ako yung own Diyos. Ako yung Diyos. Means that he's using a first person. Okay? Singular. First person, singular. Okay, now. You'll see Galatians 3.16. Hindi po niya ginamit yung salitang seeds. Ang ginamit po niya ay seed. Alright. Galatians 3.16. Galatians 3.16, the Bible says, Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promises made, he saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. You see that? Hindi niya pinagbalik tada, may seeds, mayroong seed. Hmm. Eh yung seed na yun, sino yun? Nag-iisa. Compare doon sa marami. Eh sino yun nag-iisa na yun? That is Jesus Christ. Yeah. You see that? Talagang, uh, very... Ano ba yan? Uh, sabi natin para bang meticulous ang paggamit ng Diyos sa kanyang salita. Even jot or titel, kaya makita natin yung verbal inspiration, yung hindi, hindi thoughts, hindi, hindi concept. Salita. Okay? Alright. The Old Testament prophets faithfully recorded the things which God had revealed to them even though they did not fully understand His message. They wrote of Messiah's suffering and death in Isaiah 53, Psalms 22. Of course, hindi nila alam yun. Sinulat lang nila. They also wrote of Messiah's eternal kingdom, Isaiah 11 and Psalms 45. During that time, of course, they're just writing it. They're just thinking about the coming Messiah, but they don't know who is that. Kailan mangyayari ito? Okay? They could not comprehend how these contradictory concepts could be both be true. Okay? Sapagkat meron may suffering yung Messiah, tapos meron siyang eternal kingdom. Of course, hindi nila makumpleto pa ito. Diba? But they believe that God's words were what? True. Yan ang problema ng update sa ating panahon. Yung tao ngayon naghahanap ng mali sa Biblia. Amen. Doon naman, sa panahon nila, basta kung anong sinabi ng Diyos, full face. Final. Wala silang, ano, wala silang doubt. Peace Kahit hindi nila maintindihan. Lagang. Sula. Okay? Lahat yun ang sabi ng Diyos sa kanila. Though his thoughts were beyond theirs, they made no attempt to edit the message to resolve the conflicts that they were beyond their understanding. Yan ang pagkakaiba mga kapatid ng mga tao ngayon sa panahon ng mga writers. Okay? Ng Bible. Okay? 1 Peter 1 verse 10 to 11. Nindalain natin. Okay. First Peter 1 verse 10 to 11 the Bible says of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of, of the grace that should come unto you searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it's testified beforehand 
the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. All right. Okay. So, makita natin, we have the word of God today according to 2 Peter 1.21. So, nung naisulat po ito, it is through the inspiration of God. Huh? So, hindi po ito masusulat, itong mga bagay na ito, kapatid. Yung nasulat since uh, 1500 BC hanggang sa at the end of 180, hindi po masusulat ito without the inspiration of the word of God. Amen. So, nung sinulat po na ito, God inspired okay, the words. The words. So, the inspiration of the writers inspired yung, yung words. That we have the inspired words of God. Amen? God used the writers, alright? And through the Holy Spirit, they wrote the words of God. Okay? Kaya nga po, meron po tayong infallible word of God. It was written in the Old Testament in Hebrew and some Aramaic words. We have the New Testament was written in Greek. Okay? So, yun po, no? Kaya makita natin na something, somebody is behind the Bible. And, and that is the, at this time. At this time. Okay. Now, uh, when we go to translation, okay, siyempre naniniwala tayo that we have, we have the Word of God. Na, uh, sabi nila, paano magiging inspired din yung translation? Ay, ang alam natin ay they stick to the original. Okay. So, yung iba kasi, they just stick to the, ito daw yung verbal, plenary, infallible, ito daw yung original autographs. No? At ito lang yung inspired. No? So, walang, walang inspired translation. So, hindi sila niniwala. Dahil ang King James Bible daw, so, these critics, they said that your, your King James is written in, in English, but uh, the original autographs is written in Hebrew and Greek. Alright? So, your translation is not inspired. It is not given by inspiration of God. Now, remember, okay, pagka pinag-aralan po natin ang Old Testament, ang Old Testament, you can see that in the Old Testament, may mga verses, passages po doon, nang ito po ay inilipat po sa isang language. Alright? Isang language. And that is basically Greek. From the Old Testament to Greek. Pagkita natin po, Merong mga bagay doon na hindi po hindi po pareho. They're not similar actually. Nung nai-translate po siya into Greek, they are no more similar. At merong mga dinagdag. No, I'm going to show you something. Quotation po ito sa Old Testament. You go to Habakkuk 2.4. Habakkuk 2.4. Habakkuk 2.4 Behold, his soul which is lifted up Habakkuk is not upright and in him but the just shall live by his faith. Yo, The just shall live by his faith. Kita niya? Pagdating mo sa Romans 1.17 wala na yung his. Okay? Minsan naman kaya tulad ng Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 uh, word. Ha? Ano yun? Naka-italics po yung word. Then, pagdating mo sa Matthew 4.4, yung word, wala na siyang italics. Ang italics po, kasi, yun po ay addition, no? So, ibig sabihin, ang Old Testament, wala siya nun. Okay, you go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Pero, pagdating mo sa New Testament, meron na. Eh, di, may meron tagdag. <laughs> New Testament. Alright, tignan niya. Okay. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, of the Lord, that man live. And then when Jesus Christ quoted that in the New Testament, tignan niyo po, hindi na siya pareho. At tano, kung pareho man siya, okay, no problem. Pero magkaiba siya, ano mangyari? Diba? Pero tayo tanong, bakit nagkaiba? Kasi nga, it was a translation from Hebrew to Greek, Matthew 4.4. Okay, Matthew 4.4. Yung, yung pong word po doon ay italics, means wala po siya doon sa original autographs. Okay, Matthew 4.4. Matthew 4.4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. See that? Italics pa ba? Hindi na. That proceeded out of the mouth of God. So if you said that translation cannot be what equal with the original, 
That is the that is an example. All right? Kay po punta ka sa Jeremiah 36 eh. Ha? Jeremiah 36. Makita mo, nawala yung original and then nagsulat po ulit sila. You will see, amen? The copies can be inspired also. Even the originals na wala siya, the copies can be inspired also. Amen? At may dinagdag pa sila sa Jeremiah chapter 36 after na nawala yung original. Number one. Okay? Now, you go to Proverbs 25, verse number one. Sige, Brad. Proverbs 25, verse number one. Proverbs 25, verse number one. These also, these are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. Copied, no? So, ibig sabihin, may copy. Alright, may copy. So, sa kala, pagka kinapi ba, wala nang ano. So, ibig sabihin pala, yung nakasulat na Proverbs to, eh, ano to, copy. <laughs> yung copy. books na oh. churches sa Revelation. Pupunta ka na lang, no? yung binasa ni Jesus Christ doon sa sinagog, look for. Okay? Scripture po yun. Scripture, ha? Acts chapter 8, verse 30. Scripture yun. So, i-chop din yun, no? Pero copies. Pero yun ay mga copies. So, makita ninyo, hindi nag-end sa original autographs. Amen. Ang verbal, plenary, and valuable yes, sir. inspiration and yun. Hindi nag-end sa copies, uh, sa original, kundi extend yan sa copy, extend hanggang sa translation. Sabi nila, is it a double inspiration? Yes, of course. It's a double inspiration. In-inspired yung original, in-inspired yung copies. <laughs> in-inspired yung translation, in-inspired yung original. Mm, okay. So, marami po po tayong pwedeng ipakita doon. Actually, brother, uh, na-cover na, na mo yun, di ba? Okay. Now, so, punta na po tayo doon sa two basic methods of translation. Actually, just to inform you, meron pong dalawang ganito. They call it the formal equivalency, alright? Or the literal translation, formal equivalency. Okay? Formal equivalency. And then yung tinatawag po nilang uh, tinatawag po nilang dynamic equivalency. Dynamic and formal equivalency. Ang formal equivalency is uh, often uh, referred to as literal translation. Attempts to translate word for word with relatively minor adjustments from grammatic differences between languages. Dynamic equivalency attempts to provide a more natural reading in a target language by transferring thought for thought. The idea is to convey the meaning and purpose as intended in the source culture by making textual adjustments to improve understanding in the target culture. So makita natin, ang King James Bible ay nasa formal equivalency siya, not a dynamic one. May tinatawag po silang excessive dynamic equivalency yun na po yung equivalent po ng paraphrase. Yung living Bible po, ito po ay excessive dynamic equivalency. Alright. So, we stood for a formal equivalency. Now, yung mga NIV, ito po ay mga dynamic equivalency. Okay, now. So, it's a word for word. Okay. Now, um, meron pa po tayong mga pag-uusapan. Actually, the New Testament manuscripts, four families of New Testament manuscripts, Pero ito po ay uh, dahil po sa sa paano po na preserve no? Ipunta tayo sa preservation ngayon. Paano po na preserve ang uh, ang mga manuscripts. Preservation po. Tara muna tayo sa preservation. God has protected this word. Ang ibig sabihin po ng preservation if, if revelation means what? Uh, God spoke. Okay? And then yung inspiration, God breathed. Amen? At yung preservation is God has protected this word. Now, it's 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 good to read this verse, no? At memorize this verse. Psalms 12, verse 6 and 7. Okay? Psalms 12, verse 6 and 7. Alright. Psalms 12, verse 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth purified seven times. Amen. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Okay, now listen to this. Kung anong sinulat ng Old Testament prophets that covers the past, okay, 
that covers also the future. At anuman ang sinulat ng New Testament writers that covers the future, the future, and the past. All of this, itong lahat ng ito, kapatid, through the authorship of the okay, Holy Spirit. Okay? Ito po, ay ano, anong ginawa ng Diyos dito? Being reserved nito. So, so God authored the Bible and He preserved it. Alright? Yeah. Preserved. Itong lahat ng sinulat nila, okay, ay anong nangyari? Okay, preserved. So, makita natin yung preservation na yan. Oh. Mula dito, ang preservation po, mga kapatid, mula dito, sa pagkakasulat, okay, alright, okay, mula dito sa pagkakasulat, hanggang matapos. Ha? Kita niyo yan? Okay. So, yung yung inspiration, yun ang naging dahilan para magkaroon ng Bible. Alright? Pero yung preservation naman, ito yung paraan para yung sinulat na Bible, okay, ay magamit hanggang, 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 hanggang may tao. <laughs> Yan. Kasi yun ang purpose ng Diyos eh. Bakit preserve na yung Bible? Sabi na, the, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth purified seven times thou shalt keep them. Sabi nila, nasa masculine then gender siya dahil sa sa Hebrew word na sa masculine gender. Now, you know, if you're going to use, uh, if you're going to study Hebrew and Greek, yung masculine gender ay minsan ginagamit sa thing, sa bagay. At yun naman ang tao minsan ginagamitan ng ano, neuter gender, just like Jesus Christ when He was born. Moses. Yung Luke chapter 1, verse 35, di ba? Kinabit po yung word na thing, it. na it. Samantalang, yun sa, uh, makita mo doon sa Holy Spirit, ginamit yung itself. Samantalang person ito. So, yan po ang yan po ang kakaibahan ng Greek sa sa English. Okay, but what is important is God will preserve not the people, God will preserve his words. At ang kanyang preservation is from the writing up to the future. And that was the future, eternity. Up to eternity. Amen. Kaya nga sabi niya, forever o Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Up to eternity. Up to the, sabi niya Bible, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. So mula na sinulat ito, hanggang sa mga darating pang panahon, God will preserve it. Yan ang ibig sabihin natin. So mula nung nasulat ang aklat ng Biblia, hindi na po ito mawawala. After God inspired it, then God will be settled forever and ever and ever. Okay? If, they go together. Yeah, yeah. So dahil sa meron ng inspiration Bible at iningatan ng Diyos yung inspired Bible na yun. It's given by inspiration of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Kaya naibigay sa atin yung na-inspired na Bible. Okay? Sa atin. That's the reason why we have it. We have, we have what? Ano bang purpose ng inspiration? What? Alive. Powerful. Diba? Ano ibig sabihin ng inspiration? Verbal, plenary, infallible. Perfect siya. Plenary whole. Verbal, word for word. We have this we have the word of God. Kahit hindi natin audibly, man, audibly marinig ang Diyos. Anak, anak, andito ko si Lord Jesus. Hindi na kailangan marinig yun. Amen. Because we have the verbal, plenary, infallible, inspired Bible preserved. Amen. Preserved. From this generation forever. Kaya nga ano yung ating, yung hawak natin kapatid. We have the revelation of God. We have the, we have the inspiration of God. We have the preserved word of God. Amen? Now, listen to this. Many have tried unsuccessfully to destroy the Bible. Pagpakita natin yan sa Jeremiah 36, verse 20 to 20. May kwento po dyan. They tried to burn the Bible. They tried to cut the Bible. But no, no power can destroy the word of God. Okay? So then it will be protected from error. Often men have imagined that the Bible has become corrupted by countless copying errors over the centuries. Sabi na ba, ala, magkakaroon ng error ng Bible. But this is not the case. The Hebrew scribes took their work of hand copying the scriptures very seriously. They devised methods to ensure accuracy. Okay? And textual accuracy is also, also confirmed by multitude of ancient manuscripts. Kaya pag kinulit mo yung ancient manuscripts, you will be shocked how God preserved this. This is one example. The oldest stone copies of the Old Testament were dated 895 AD. 
But the Dead Sea Scrolls, tanda natin ha, yun daw pinakamatandang Old Testament dated 895 AD. Pinakamatanda ha? But the Dead Sea Scrolls, alright, discovered in 1947, included Old Testament copies dated from 150 BC. Umatras pa ng isang libong taon. Ibig sabihin, kung ano yung existing na nakita nilang Old Testament copies, nung ma-discover nila yung Dead Sea Scrolls, meron pang isang libong taon na preserved ng Diyos na katulad din nung kanilang hawa. At walang pagbabago. O paano nangyari yun? Human power? No, of course. Sabi ng Bible, not by my, nor by power, but my spirit, saith the Lord. Okay? So, kung ang araw ay lumulubog, lumilitaw, at ang Diyos ang gumagawa niya, mahalaga yan sa tao, tama? Amen. At kung ang salita ng Diyos ay mahalaga sa tao, higit pa yan sa araw, sapagat kaluluwa ang pinag-usapan dito. Ang araw nagbibigay lang siya ng sustenan sa ating health, sa ating, sa ating, ano, sa ating, yung, yung survival. Pero ang word of God is more than that. It's the soul of men. So hindi niya pwedeng basta na lang mawawala ang salita ng kanyang in his word. Okay? Now, the New Testament is supported by ancient copies in far greater abundance and better condition than any other ancient literature. There are more than 5,600 New Testament manuscripts, 9,000 por portions and fragments, 86,000 quotes by early church leaders, okay? And you're going to compare the documentation from other literature from the same era. Pakita ninyo mga kapatid, na maraming mga katapat ng Bible na yung mga literatures na matatanda, no? Sabi nga nila, merong pinakamatanda yung, yung sinulat ni, ni Homer, yung Iliads of Homer, okay? Yun ay, yun ay pinakamatanda na. Ha? Pero, may mas matatanda pa doon sa sinulat ni Homer. At yun ang Bible. <laughs> yun ang Bible. Okay? Now, alright, so, uh, I think uh, we have given the, so, the word plenary inspiration means the whole Bible is God's word. All scripture. Kaya nakita natin yung word na all. Infallible inspiration means that the Bible is accurate and true. Faith in the Bible cannot be called blind faith. Okay? Because there is an overwhelming internal, external evidence that the Bible is what? True. Ito, to Isaiah 34, 16. Ito yung external and internal evidences. Alam nyo, kapag ka kayo nagbabasa ng Bible, makikita nyo yung internal evidence. Okay? Right? Yeah. And then, pag external evidence, makita mo yung testimony no, outside. Yung external evidence, makita mo yung pinag-aralan natin batang, yung ating mga, yung mga discoveries, yung archaeological discoveries, external evidence yun. Pero yung internal evidence, habang nagpapasa ka, makita mo how powerful is the word of God, how accurate is the word of God. Alright, Isaiah 34, 16. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord, and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Amen, amen, amen. So, hindi pa babayaran Diyos ang kanyang salita. Okay? Alright. So, we have what? We have a Bible which, which is historically accurate. We have the Bible which is scientifically accurate. Alright? The Bible's historical accuracy has been verified and demonstrated repeatedly by archaeological discoveries. So, yung mga skeptics, yung mga critics, na debunk sila ng Bible. Okay? Because this nation was unknown in secular history. Yung mga hitay. Sabi nila, walang hitay. Hindi nila alam, meron. Kasi yun ang binabagit ng Bible sa Genesis 15-20, 2 Kings 7-6. Later on, na-discover ito, okay, in early 1900s, monuments and documents were found in Egypt and in Syria which clearly identified this nation as a prominent power in the region known as Turkey. This, their prominence peaked in two periods corresponding to the biblical narrative. Ayos ang Bible. Amen? The Bible is scientifically accurate. Skeptics have often seen conflicts between Bible and natural science. However, where the Bible speaks on such matters, it has stood the test of time while contradictory scientific theories have come and gone. It stands to reason that the one who created all things will speak with greater comprehension of his creation than his creatures. Example po dito, 
In ancient times, men thought that the world rested on shoulders of Atlas. Yung gigante na si Atlas. Yung isang god na Atlas. Or on the backs of great elephants. But modern science understands that God's word said all along, even in his oldest book, Job 56 verse 27, the Bible said it hung it from nothing. The Bible is prophetically accurate. The Bible, unlike any other human literature, speaks accurately concerning the future. Approximately one third of the Bible consists of prophecy about things which were not, which were yet future at the time of writing. About half of those prophetic statements have already been fulfilled. We will look at some of them in, in our studies. No? Pag-aralan natin yung prophecy. Fulfilled prophecy is one of the evidences of the veracity of God's word. Isaiah 45 verse 20 to 22. Isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10. God's promises, whether of judgment or of blessing, will be fulfilled down to the smallest detail. Matthew 5, 18, Numbers 23, 19, and Psalms 119 verse 89. Jesus Christ gave witness to the inspiration of Scripture when His own disciples were slow and to believe it. He proved them, calling them what? Fools. Ang Fools. Luke 24, verse 17 to 27. Early in the 20th century, in the response of growing tide of skeptical theologians, Bible-believing pastors identified five fundamentals of biblical Christianity. Ito po lima. Number one, the inerrancy of the autograph. Two, the, by, the birth, virgin birth of Christ or the deity of Christ. Number three, the substitutionary atonement of Christ. Four, the bodily resurrection of Christ. And five, the historic fact of miracles and the second coming of Christ. Kita nyo? Alright? So, no problem with the Bible. Kanino may problema? Sa tao. Amen? Now, ano po itong illumination? Ang illumination ay madali lang naman. God must enable His people to understand His word. Okay? So if, if revelation is God's fault, inspiration is God, breath, the breath, preservation is God, will protect His word. Last, illumination is what? God must enable His people to understand His word. Ito yung enabling. Enabling. Anong purpose ng enabling? Para all the one with God. Did you ba alam, kapatid, na maraming mga tao naging matalino? Dahil sa Bible. Amen. Anong sabi ng Bible sa Psalms 19? Basa. Verse number 7. Psalms 19, verse number 7. So you under enabling will we'll give you understanding. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. Yeah. Making wise what? The simple. The simple. Napatalino. Eh, paano napatalino yung isang taong simple lang kaisipan? Why? Because of what? The illumination of God. Illumination. Alright? Ito po ay ginagawa sa pamagitan po ng scripture to scripture. Comparing scripture to scripture. First Peter 1 verse 10 to 12. Notice that the prophets and even the angels did not fully understand what God was saying as the scriptures were being written. They were recording God's revelation yet they understood only what God revealed personally to them. Today, believers have the benefit of increased understanding through the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Kaya nga po, sabi natin progressive eh, progressive. Kaya nga po makita natin, parang yung, yung, bang, yung bang understanding natin, parang yung theology ay para bang, alam niyo po yung, ano, yung kawayan, di ba? May mga buho, buho, di ba? Habang tumataas ang kawayan, nagdadagdaga ng buho, Buko ng buko, buko ng buko, buko ng buko, ng buko ng buko. Hanggang sa tumaas at tumaas at sa pinakamataas at kanyang kayang itangkad. At bawat yun, mga kapatid, ay increase of knowledge. Amen? Okay? So the more you stand in the Bible, the more God will bring you to higher knowledge. And you will be blessed with so much knowledge when you keep on studying the Bible. Do you like that? So, Amen. 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 Jesus' disciples spent more than three years under his teaching, but it was that until he opened their understanding according to Luke 24, verse 44 and 45, Brad Basa, that they began to understand the scriptures. Yang tao dyan, that he opened their understanding yeah. that they might understand the scriptures. Binuksan ang kanilang kaunawa na tao dyan, illumination. Yeah. Kaya nga yung word na enlightened, enlightened, yung niliwana, lumiwanag sa enlightened, na enlightened ka. Uy, 
na yung light na Laging eye-opener sa akin. <laughs> Kaya nga yung Bible study na ito, na-illuminate tayo eh. Tumiliwanag sa akin ha. Yung dating malabo, lumiliwanag na. Okay? Alright. Sige, baso ka. No. No. Luke 24 verse 44 to 45. Luke 24 verse 44 to 45. The Bible says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the songs concerning me. Then open their eyes. Uh, uh, he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Amen. So now listen. Kiling po kayo. Yung in-inspire ng Diyos na revelation ng Diyos. Yung, yung revelation ng Diyos na binigay sa tao. Okay? Through the inspiration. At nasulat ito for 1,600 years. At yun din po ay mula doon sa writing. At ang doon sa the, the future. God will preserve that word. Okay? As God promised. Yung sinula na revelation ng Diyos sa tao with the human writers through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now, God preserve it. Now, anong purpose ng kapatid? Kung walang illumination, hindi natin maintindihan ang kanyang revelation. Hindi natin maintindihan ang inspiration niya. And in spite the Bible niya, how can we understand that? How can God use us to His ministry? O paano natin i-apply sa buhay natin kung walang illumination? That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, yung Holy Spirit will work in our hearts. Amen? At ito ang tawag dito, illumination. Yung Word of God na present ngayon, okay? Ang tawag po dyan, upang makuha natin, may apply sa buhay natin, mga kapatid, ang tawag po dyan, illumination. Ay, illumination. Okay? Mali. Hindi illuminate. Illumination. Okay? Alright, so na-illuminate tayo na scripture. Kaya nga po, sabi nila, pag binubuksan ko daw, pag nakasara ang Bible, black, nakita mo, amen? Amen, black. Amen. Pag binuksan mo, white. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, pag nakabukas, ilaw, amen? Pagka nakasara, dilim. Kaya pag palagi nakasara ang Bible, madilim. Pero kapag nakabukas palagi, aliwan. Because the word of God is light. And remember that God is light. And in him is not darkness at all. Yeah. Kung gusto mo ng maliwanag na buhay, maliwanag na mukha, kaya nga makita mo si, ano, si Moses, nagliwanag ang mukha niya. Amen? Ay yung mga taong masaya, palagi nasa Bible. Nasa Bible sa atin. Amen? Amen? Kaya masaya yung mga taong nag... Nanunod dito, palagi masaya. Amen? Ang mga masin ninyo, walang kalungkutan kahit tumalang COVID-19. Masaya sila. Bakit? Kasi Bible pinag-usapan nila. Hindi problema, hindi sakit, hindi bagay na present situation, ang tanaw nila yung future. God illuminated them. We need to be aware. We need to be aware that the natural human heart is blind to God's truth. Bulag, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. To regenerate, or what we call born again, human heart is hard of hearing. God's children are dependent upon the Holy Spirit to teach them to understand God's word. Rightly. Yung tama ah, na understanding. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 13. John 16 verse 12 to 15. Inote nyo na lang po ito. We hinder the Holy Spirit's work by. Number one. Neglect of His work. Hebrews 5 verse 11 to 14. Carnal living. Kaya nga yung mga carnal. Hindi nila ma-appreciate. Ang ganda ng Bible. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 1 to 3. Failure to pray for open eyes. Yung iba, basa ka ng Biblia. They're not asking God's power. Lord, please, pagliwanagin mo ang aking isip para maintindihan ko ang iyong salita. Ephesians 1, verse 15 to 23. And failure to use proper methods of interpretation. What's that? 2 Timothy 2.15. Yan ang problema ng iba. Kaya nga si John the Baptist, binaptay si Kristo, naging baptist si Kristo. Bakit? Walang right division. That is, you need to be aware of that. Amen. You need to be aware of that. Remember, carnal ang tao with a natural heart, blind. Kaya without the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Kaya yung sabihin mong, tumayo ang gawain ito. Tumayo at naging successful. Not because of God, but because of the leader. That's wrong, I tell you. Be aware, I tell you, that the human heart is yeah. blind 
to God's truth. Kaya hindi ka pwede magtiwala sa sarili mo. Dapat sa Diyos lang. Pati pag-understand sa Biblia. Kaya mangyari, pag tinanong ka, kung ano ng mga kapalpakan ang mga sinasabi mo. Bakit? Kasi mga alam illumination eh. Walang Holy Spirit na sumusubaybay sa kanya, tumutulong. God's Word is essential what? For spiritual life. Kaya mga pag ang tao, di na nagbabasa ng Biblia, nagpipris na lang ng sarili niyang pamamaraan, ano mangyari? Wala siyang spirituality. Amen. Yeah. Pag binati ko siya, galit ka agad. Amen. Magre-report ka agad. Ano ba sabi ng Bible? Di ba ang pagkain ng kaluluwa ay ang salita ng Diyos? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3, Matthew 4 4, Jeremiah 15 16, 1 Peter 1 23, 1 Peter 2 verse 2 and 3, Joshua 1 8. Para maging successful ka, what you need is what? The word of God. It's a about essential. Kung meron bang essential na sinasabi nila, alam mo pinaka-essential sa buhay natin? Walang iba kundi ang Word of God. Amen. The Word of God, the Bible is the final authority. Praise God to God's people on earth. Okay, on earth. Ito yung final authority, hindi yung tao. Ha? Kaya pag may nagsasabi dyan, ha? ito, 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 ito. Pero hindi po siya gumagamit ng scripture. Amen. Ah, magtanong na kayo. Bakit wala siya binubuksan ang Biblia? Okay? That's our study. Amen. That's about Four words that describe the character of the Bible, which is God's word. We have what? The revelation, the inspiration, the preservation, and illumination. God revealed himself to the writers of the scriptures since 1500 BC. Naisulat po nila yung past future, past eternity. Alright, hanggang kay Adam, naisulat niya. Genesis 1, naisulat ni Moses. And then up to the future eternity. Since then, amen. God revealed to them and God inspired them to write the written words. Alright, so who is the author of the Bible? It's the Holy Spirit. Who is going to illuminate you? Illuminate you. It's the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Okay, important po siya sa ating buhay. Amen. Important yung panalangin, Lord. Itong pagbasa ko po, mga Panginoon, tulungan niyo po ako para maintindihan ko po, Panginoon, ang iyong salita. Para pagbukas mo, men, hindi mo magbukas yung nangyari sa isang tao na buksan niya, pagbukas niya, sabi niya, uh, gawin mo yung ginawa ni Judas Iscariot, nagpakamatay. So yun ang nakita niya. Uh, bukas niya. Pagbukas niya agad, and, and uh, Judas hung himself. Patay, di ba? Hingi siya ng, hingi siya ng gaitan sa nalagay. Sabi niya, and Judas hung himself. Ano? Ito talaga Lord ang kalooban mo. So, binuksan niya hindi ng isang page ng Bible. Sabi niya, what you want to do is do it immediately. <laughs> do it wisely, <Okay>. sabi niya. <laughs> Kaya po, we need illumination. Yung kapitbahay namin, kanina lang, nagpakamatay pa sa. Oh! Bakla. Nagka-problema sa boyfriend niya. That's it. Because you know what? The human heart is dark. Kaya kung wala kang illumination ng Bible, I tell you. Okay? So, salamat po. No? Ulitin po natin, Revelation means God has spoken. Alright? With, with a what? With a progressive revelation. We have what? We have the inspiration. God has spoken through human writers. Alright? We have what we call the verbal, the plenary, and the infallible. Okay, at ang translation ko can be formal or or dynamic. Okay? Right? And then we have uh, right, so next time po pag natin yung New Testament Manuscript Families okay, kasi kasama ito sa ating study. Preservation, God has protected His word. And then God protected this word, uh, the verbal, plenary, and polyvocal. Okay? And we have what? We have the last the illumination. God must enable His people to understand His word. Okay, so, prayer people. tayo. Walang problema yung internet. Question, question, question. Pastor, ako may wild imaginary question ako, Pastor. Okay. Uh, when we reach millennium, saan mapupunta yung mga sabihin natin yung King James Bible particularly uh -huh. and literally ano ba yung pastor? Masusunog dyan sa tribulation period o mararapture o saan mapupunta yung mga Bible 
I mean, the, yung King James Bible. Uh, Siyempre, basically ganito. No? Siyempre, the Antichrist is what? Is religious. Alright? Religious. It's not religious. Ba't siya tatanggalin ang Bible? Eh, religious yun. Eh, dililitaw yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang talagang layunin na siya ay laban sa Diyos. Siyempre, he's going to use that. Kaya lang tulad po ng ating, yung makita mo yung orientation na nangyayari ngayon, ang tao ay papalayo sa King James. Diba? Papalayo sa King James. Ano mangyayari? Lilitaw ang panahon na wala na talaga totally yan. Okay? So, anong, ano, ano mangyayari? Ano mangyayari? Kaya ang matitira sa tribulation period, ano? Eh, di kurapay po. Amen? Kung meron ang King James, siyempre ipokorek nila yan. That's what we're doing here right now. No? Dini-study natin kung anong ginagawa ng iba. Kinokorek nila ang King James, di ba? O using the King James, didibigate nila ng maring gamit ng ano, ng paggagamit sila sa King James, pero ibang teaching. Sabi sa mga, the Bible is still present. But in a different what? In different purpose. Okay? So, ganun ang, ganun ang mayayari. Eh, yung 144,000 na mga ngaral pastor, anong gamit nilang uh, word of God? Kasi sabi ron, sa Revelation 6.9 tsaka Revelation 12, yun ay testimony. So, anong, anong gagamitin nilang uh, word of God or Bible? Okay. Hanggang, tsaka, ngayon, hanggang ngayon kasi, hanggang ngayon kasi, ano pa eh, present pa eh. Ang Hebrew Bible. Ang Hebrew yung tana. At uh, ang caretaker dyan sa ating panahon, yung mga, yung mga umahawak ng Hebrew Bible. Mga rabbis. Yung yeah, mga rabbis. So they're going to use that. Kasi nga, they're going to stay with what? They're going to stay with the Old Testament. Kasi yung Old Testament, ano, commandment, kasi babalik yun eh. Di ba? So yun ang kanila magiging emphasis. They're going to use the Hebrew, Hebrew Bible. Okay. Okay, question po. From Brother Christian Solano. Yeah. Pastor, question po. Correct me if I'm wrong. Bakit po karamihan or halos simple people lang ang pinipili ng Panginoon para isulat ang mga salita niya? Thank you po. Okay. Thank you po. Alright, so check po natin ang Bible natin. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Okay. Alright, 1. Okay. Verse 25. Sabi ng Bible, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many, Colossians 1 verse 25, 26, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh are not, are not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 27, and God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, Verse 28, and base things of the world and things which are despised at God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Verse 29, it was a God that no flesh should glory in his presence. Uh, uh, right? That no flesh should glory in his presence. Ibig sabihin si Paurong talaga walang alam sa Bible? Ah, walang alam. Walang si Paurong. Okay. Okay, uh, this question siguro ay naitanong na po, pero just for the review lang, Pastor. Uh, ito ay common question uh, in the circle of Bible version and inspiration. Paano po yung uh, mga words ni Satan sa Genesis 3.1, Matthew chapter 4, and marami, marami pa, yeah. entered the Bible, are they part of inspiration? Okay. Now, and how we handle that, Pastor? Okay, ganito. Not all words in the Bible are God's voices. Not all words in the Bible are God's voices. Alright? But all words in the Bible are God's record of history. God's record of history. Ibig sabihin, kung si Satan nagsalita, nirecord ng Diyos yun. Ha? Kung ang tao nagsalita, nirecord ng Diyos yun. Kung ang hayop nagsalita, nirecord ng Diyos yun. Kung ang angel nagsalita, nirecord ng Diyos yun. So lahat yan, okay, ay God's record of what? History. So hindi man ito God's voices lahat, pero it is God's record of history. Kaya ang purpose ng Bible is history. History. Tama. Hindi lahat ng sinabi sa Bible ay galing sa, sa tinig ng Diyos. Tama. Pero lahat yan is God's record of history. Okay. 
Ibig sabihin pala, Pastor, kung sabihin natin, kung tatanggalin natin yung mga words ni Satan, eh, paano din natin malalaman kung paano siya umakatak? Uh, wala tayong diba? record. Wala tayong record ng kanyang lying. O, oh, ideas niya. Uh, wala ideas. tayong record ng kanyang devices. Wala kang record ng kanyang, uh, kanyang pagiging wicked and evil. Amen. So, we need the words that recorded. Amen. Question po. Kung wala po kayong question, while we are waiting, shout out po. Wala po yung ating taga shout out. Wala po yung shouter na ating di ko lang po nasa. Pagod siya. Pagod. Pagod po. Pagod. Kaya walang bang shout for joy. Oh, wala pong shout for joy. Alright. Shout out po mga kapatid. We have brother Ray Dairit and sister Loche and sister Nenalyn and si Dimple Guy, brother Richie and we have si Ella ba to? Ella na? Si Ella and Brother Jason, uh, Elisa Nieves Tabil, Sister, Sister Sheila Trace Gregorio, Sister Aimee, Brother Christian, Sister Ivy, Brother Ronald, Sister Joy Joy, Brother Jabez, the first owner, Sister Lamela, and My Heart Rings Melody, and Brother Ian Gomez, and Brother Glenel. And Ma'am Tessa Amigo Polonio, Brother Raymond, Sister Shaliana, Tipen Torio, and Brother Noel, Brother Ryan, and Angela, sino ba to? Angel, and Brother Ramon Asho, siya po si Half P. Half P. <laughs> and Brother Arely, oh, bago. And Sister Marlo, Magnon, and Mayor Amitis, shout out po sa inyo. Alki Strata ba to? Australia. Jason, Brother Jason, good evening sa inyo. Ednard, Sister Reni, JR, Ray, Jun, ang hirap kong ba tayo, walang affiliate ito. <laughs> Sister Noin May, and we have real KJV believers here. Staff Melchor, Natasha, Sister Leia, uh, Annie Hermoso, Sister Eliza Cabo, and Jodel Monteveros, But Pastor Eric Jose, Shaina Ibe, and Jocelyn, and Emmanuel. Shout out po sa inyong lahat. Magandang magandang gabi po. At kung may mga question po, yes, we have one question from Sister Sheila Drives Gregorio. Yeah. Good evening po, Pastor Joe, and sa lahat, good evening din po. Hirap lang po me, mga connect sa net. But I have question po about yesterday topic po. Ano po yung pinagkaiba ng mga prophet and mga hukom sa book of Judges po? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Same lang po ba sila? Alright. So, ang prophet kasi ginamit ng Panginoon. Alright? Basically, kung, kung, kung ibabibase natin dito sa ating study, no? sila ay ginamit ng Panginoon to write God's words. Alright? To write God's words. And uh, also, kung ano yung proclamation ng Diyos sa isang bansa. No? Just like Israel, Edom, Nineveh. So, kung napag-aralan natin, nakra, no? So, it, they are God's mouthpiece. Amen. God's mouth. You actually, basically, kaya nakalagay ito, the mouth. Hindi nakalagay ito, eh. The mouths. Nakalagay ito, the mouth of the prophets. Kung magbasahin nyo po yun, kita nyo, the mouth of the prophets. Hindi yung mouth, eh. The mouth of the prophets. Ibig sabihin, God's God mouth. used them as the megaphone of God. Di ba? Mouth. The mouthpiece of God. Now, ang um, judges naman, they rule over uh, Israel. During the time of, ano, uh, wala pa silang ano. Kaya nga si Samuel, kasama siya sa mga judges, ito yung time wala silang kingdom. Alright? Naging country sila, naging nation sila, pero wala silang kingdom. Kasi hindi pa lumabas yung unang king. Actually, after the judges, ang unang king dyan ay si King Saul. Alright? Then after that, King David. So walang kingdom. Just to guide them against their enemies. Na? Ang judges kasi, ito yung time na apostasi ng Israel. Alright? Apostasi ng Israel yun. So, during that time, kasi sila yan o, sila yung nagiging captive o kaya sila yung nagiging na, na, <coughs> nagiging prisoners of war o kaya uh, nagiging tagabayad sila ng tribute doon sa isang sa isang country na nagsumapos sa kanila. Consequence ng kanilang kasalanan yun eh. Okay? So, that's the reason. Di ba, after Joshua, Joshua nakuha niya yung land of Canaan. Right? So, nung nakuha niya yung land of Canaan, di ba, sila yung ngayon yung naging occup occupant ng land of Canaan. Amen. Pero hindi natapos yung gira after Joshua. Kasi nga, nag-apostate. Kaya nga, yung makita ko sa si Joshua 24 verse 15, sabi niya, 
But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So if you want to serve other gods, then serve him. On the other side of this, ano, of this uh, river, this flood, serve him. Yun mga gods yun, we serve him. But as for me, my house, we serve the Lord. So after, the, after Joshua, ano nangyari? Nag-collapse spiritually ang Balsang Israel. So that's the reason, umikot-ikot sila. Repentance, and then idolatry sa naman, repentance, idolatry, repentance, idolatry, sin, repentance, sin. They cry to the Lord kapag sila nagirap. And then every time na nagka-cry sila sa point, every time they ask God's help, bibigyan sila ng Diyos ng isang ruler. Just like we have Jephthah. Jephthah, no? We have Samson. We have Gideon. We have Samuel. Ba? We have Barak. Ano yun? Barak na yun? Balak. Uh, no, no. We have uh, Deborah. Diba? Alright? So we have... Uh, Si Samson, isang example yun. No? Kalaban niya mga Philistines. So, ang mga nangyari, yung naging ruler sila for the meantime. Hanggang sa nagkaroon sila ng kingdom. At yung first kingdom nila ay si King Saul. Alright? Kaya lang, ang anong intent talaga ay si King David. So, they are, they became ruler. Ang mga prophet, they are God's mouthpiece. God's mouthpiece. Okay. Thank you. All right. Another question from Brother Deepen Torrio. Yeah. Brad, tunog PBA ang apelido mo ha. Mm. Good evening po, Pastor. Ask ko lang po about difference ng hell and bottomless pit. Abang nauhulog po ba si Satan? Nasusunog din siya. Salamat po. Alright. Ang bottomless pit kasi yun ang, yun ang spirits in prison na nakalagay sa 1 Peter 3.19. No? Yun yung bottomless pit. Yun ang lugar ng mga angels na nag-fall sa Genesis 6. Okay, so magbubuksan po sila sa Revelation 9, yung bottomless pit, no? So check nyo na lang sa Bible po ninyo, just to make this uh, this uh, question in short. Revelation 9, and then punta po kayo sa 1 Peter 3.19, you preach Jesus Christ went to the to the lowest part of the earth, sabi ng Bible, that's the, the bottomless pit. And then he preached to the spirits in prison, and then lock them, kasi he has the key of hell and death, di ba? He locked niya yun. Then he preached to the Old Testament saints in the paradise of Abraham's person. Then, kinuha sila and then dinala doon sa third heaven. Okay? So, yung bottomless pit, yun yung kung saan nandun yung spirits in prison. Yun ang bottomless pit. So, some suggested... Sa ngayon, hindi pa siya, no? Sa, sa ngayon, uh, hindi pa siya nasusunod. Diba? Tama. Alright? Pero sa future, doon din siya. Ang, ang, ang lugar nila, ang lugar nila sa future, ano? Lake of Fire. Some suggested that the bottomless pit shaped like a donut. Mm. Parang round and then umiikot-ikot lang siya doon. Hindi siya talaga nagpo-fall na pababa. Right. Kaya okay. naging bottomless siya. Yeah. They are circling. They are circling. Parang ano yan? Parang alam mo yung, yung sa gitna ng dagat, di ba yung may tinatawag silang ano? ipo-ipo. Yun, gano'n. Kaya hindi sila umalis. Ando lang sila. Hindi sila nauhulog, di ba? Pero... Oh. Ano na sila? They are willing, willing. Parang ano? Whirlpool. Tama yun, whirlpool. Parang ano? Parang alam mo yung yung uh, yung washing machine. Di ba? Ano? Whirlpool. <laughs> whirlpool. <laughs> Oo nga no, whirlpool yun ano? Okay, whirlpool. So yung uh, bottomless pit pa sa located din siya sa earth. No? Yes, right. Hindi ba to yung Great gulf fix dun sa Luke 16. Oh, yun, ang, yun ang in between. The gulf fix kasi that's the water that separates the, the, the paradise and the, the torment. torment. So ibig sabihin pa, so, under the earth, na ito, nasa ilalim natin, may mga places dyan, uh, compartments. Yeah. Wow. Compartments. Alright, any question po? May mga question pa po ba kayo? Question po, question po. Maganda po kung nagtatanong po kayo. Alright, wala po ang ating taga-shutter. Siya po ay nagpapahinga na po. Alright, so napakaganda po ng ating discussion about the Bible. Hopefully, naging blessing po sa inyo ito mga kapatid para alam ninyo na we have the revealed truths of God's Word. Okay po. At uh, may mga naging tanong kasi nung nakaraan na hindi natin ano, na, 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 na entertain. Okay? Paki ano lang po, paki ulit na lang po, no? Kasi nga dumating yung point na nawala yung ano, internet tapos may question, 
Tapos nung bumalik tayo, pwede na natin na. Oh, oh, oh. So may mga question do sa hell, eh, di ba? Yung live replay natin do sa hell. So may mga questions po doon. Anyway, for the sake of your questions, itanong nyo lang po ulit. Okay? So walang problema to kahit ulit-ulit po nyo tanong hanggang sa maging maliwanag sa inyo. Hindi po tayo ano dito, hindi po tayo uh, para bang, ay, na nahiya ako kasi naitanong mo yan. No? Kung di pa clear sa inyo, you ask it again kasi baka mamaya mas magand matagdagan pa yung ating magiging sagot. No? Okay? Question, question pa sa May question po dito. Uh, from Sister Joy Joy. <coughs> Sa 400 years of silence, yung mga tao doon, sakop pa din sila ng law? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kasi itong 400 years of silence, actually, natapos siya kay John the Baptist, right? Kay John the Baptist. Okay. Siya yung unang Baptist sa Bible. Ha? John the Baptist. Okay? Pwede siya dito. Right? So, yung 400 years, nawala yung silence. Kasi nga, may voice. May voice. Uh, voice from the wilderness I'm the voice Okay Sa wilderness sabi niya John the Baptist Voice So nawala yung silence Okay Si John the Baptist Actually sabi ng Bible sa Luke 16 16 Sabi niya siya isa Old Testament prophet Since the prophet is until John Yan So Old Testament prophet pa rin siya Even Jesus Christ The time of Jesus Christ Old Testament pa rin yun. Okay? So, Jesus Christ, Old Testament pa rin yun. Right? So, yung 400 years, Old Testament. Old Testament po. Okay po. Alright. So, Old Testament po yun, yung 400 years silence. Pero ang last prophet po na nag nagsulat ay yung si Malakai, no? Yung minor prophet. Next question, Pastor? Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, paano po naman po yung sinasabi nilang Agharta Abraham's bosom po ba yun? From Brother Ednard Cargulio. Ano yun? Ano yun? Yung po daw Agharta. Agharta. Apo, yun din daw po ba yung Abraham's bosom? Ah, uh, Agharta. That's, that's, that's Greek, right? Greek? Agharta. Um, not familiar actually Not familiar But uh, Sa Bible kasi I always based on the King James Bible Pagka Yung Abraham's Pose your, your Actually yung salitang Abraham's Pose Kasi ano yun eh Para bang Indicative of comfort Okay Indicative of comfort Kasi naging para bang Naging nickname Ng lugar It's an indicative of comfort Actually wala naman talagang Walang pangalan Kasi kaya tinawag sa Abraham's Pose Kasi nga Nung makita ng rich man sa Luke 16, si Lazarus, nasa bosom siya ni Abraham. Sabi, he was comforted during the time no, nang makita ng rich man. Kaya, yung mga, ano, yung mga nagsusulat kukul sa Bible, gumagawa ng lesson, gumagawa ng messages. So, ginawa nila ito, Abraham's bosom. Sabi po sana ng pasta. Wikipedia. Agharta is a legendary kingdom that is said to be located in the Earth's core. Ah, dyan nagpunta si Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Kaya lang po, kingdom po yun eh. So, hindi po siya prison. Hindi rin po siya compartment. So, hindi po yan. Kasi ang kung ang Agharta ay kingdom. So, it's not the same with Abraham's boss. Hindi ko lang ang Agharta. Ah, okay. Ang movie pa lang. Alright, thank you for the information, Rod. At least alam natin kung ano yung Agharta. It's not Abraham's question. Question. Next question, Pastor. From Sister Ruth. 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 Ruth.
Revelation 20:14. And death and hell, ayun yung hell, were cast into the lake of fire. So what is larger? Kasi yung hell, itinapos sa lake of fire. Ito yung big sabihin, larger yung lake of fire. So yung hell nasa earth. So yung yung hell, uh, yung hell nasa earth, ha? Yung lake of fire, wala sa sa earth. Wala sa sa earth. Kaya kung yung, 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 ano, yung, yung earth, nandun yung hell, okay? So yung buong earth na yun, okay? Yung, yung, na, yung laman ng nandun sa gitna ng earth, okay? Para bang ano siya? Para bang? You know, siguro, di, kasi magkakaroon ng great earthquake sa kone, sa, sa tribulation period. So what will happen to the earth? Di ba? Something will happen to the earth. Ibig sabihin, parang magkakaroon ng, yung alam mo ba yung, yung parang bang nabubuksan, yung mga lupa, di ba? Magkakaroon ng cavity siya, di ba? Nabubuksan siya. And then what will happen? And then, and hell will be exposed. Okay? So the dead there, the, the people inside that, okay, and hell, the place. Tatapos siya doon sa... So pastor, yung, yung hell nag-start siya sa Ezekiel 28, tsaka Isaiah 14. Hmm. May origin yung hell. Yeah, yeah. Second hindi siya kinre, hindi kinreate yung earth na nandudun yung hell. That's right. Second Peter 2.4. Kinreate siya dahil sa mga fallen angels. Hindi ba connected yung Second Peter 3.10, yung, yung uh, in the elements of the earth? shall melt because of the fervent heat. Mm, okay. Hindi ba ito connected sa Revelation 20 verse number 15 and death and hell were cast to the lake of fire and the whole earth itself natapon doon. That's right. That's, right. That's connected. Okay, so Lord. Yeah, it's connected. Kaya maluluso na siya. So what's the use of this earth? Baptism, no? Yeah, what's the use of this earth? Kaya nga kung ang earth no, kaya ko ang earth no, nalubog ng tubig, Brad, sa panahon ni Lucifer. Oo. Okay, dami ng panahon, ang earth, malulubog naman siya sa apoy. There you go. Amen. Not of water, but of fire. Uh, tama yung 2 Peter 3, 5. Yeah. Yung uh, in and out yeah. of water. That's right. That's right. Wow. New revelation. Yeah. Back to theology. <laughs> Amen. Question po. Plan na po. Kung wala kayong question, kami po magtatanong. May natutunan po ba kayo? <laughs> Amen, amen. Alright, let's keep on reading, studying the Bible. Okay, wala pong mawawala sa inyo, I tell you. Walang mawawala sa taong nagbababad sa badal na kasulatan. Wala pong mawawala. Tandaan po natin what we need is knowledge, but next is temperance. Last question, Pastor. From Sister Aisel Frances, Joy Solano Manalo. Amen. Pastor, yung mga soul, yung mga soul po, straight po ba, Sa hell or sa lake of fire? Mauna po sila sa hell muna. Okay? Kasi ang, ang lake of fire, future pa yun eh. Future. So hindi pa mangyayari yung itatapod ang tao sa lake of fire. So it's a temporary place, yung hell. No? After that, okay, sa Revelation 20, pagka nag na yung tao sa white throne judgment, then tatapon sila sa, pag hindi sila safe, tatapon sila sa lake of fire. Pero, Presently, kapag ag-save, namatay. No? Punta sila sa imbyerno. And then, hihintayin nila yung white throne judgment. At doon sa white throne judgment, mag-re-appear sila sa Diyos. And then, with, with the body made for hell, yun, natapos sila sa lake of fire. Alright? Pastor, Pastor, connected po sa lake of fire from Brother Timentorio. Possible po ba, Pastor, ang lake of fire ay yung sun? No, it's not. It's larger than that. Actually, sa 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, malulusaw lahat yan eh, pati yung sun. Mm-hmm. Lahat, lahat. lahat ng heavens. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng ano, lahat ng universe. 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 The whole universe will be burned. Kaya para siyang damit na magpukulaps na gano'n. Alam mo, parang nagubad ka ng rope. Tapos, magpawawala, mag- magiging naked. Magiging naked lahat. Kaya nga, ma-expose yung, ano, eh, yung white room. Magiging naked, yung, yung, yung heaven, mawawala yung sea sa ibabaw ng universe. Tapos yung lahat ng makita mong starry, starry nights, mawawala yung, di ba? yung mga outer space, planets, di ba? meteors, and everything in the outer space, including the sun, including the solar system, including the galaxies, magpukulaps yung mga demos yan. Parang damit na mauhubad. 
and then magiging naked ng lahat. Ibig sabihin, makita nila yung third heaven. And they will see, going, they're going to see the white throne judgment. Okay? So, it's not the sun. It's not the sun. Next question, Pastor, from Sister My Heart, Rings Melody. Pastor, out of the topic po, pero may nabasa po ako sa Genesis 6.4 na may mga giants. Tama po ba na ang fallen angels ay nakipagtalik sa giants at nagkaroon sila ng mga anak? Di po ba yung tinatawag the sons of God, yung mga angels? Yeah. Yung pong mga sons of God, italik sila sa Dr. Shukme at nakagkaroon sila ng anak na mga giants. No? Sons of God, mga angels po yun. Then, nakipagtalik sila sa Dr. Shukme, sa mga tao, mga babae. And then, yung anak nila are giants. Sabi ng bago, men of renown. Men of renown. Mga Ah, wala. wala na, namatay na yon kasi nagkaroon ng, di ba dilubian sa panahon ni Noah o, kaya, kaya, kaya nga nagkaroon ng universal flood sa panahon ni Noah kasi to destroy them to destroy them bakit mayroon sila na ano pa sa Genesis 14 may mga giants na hindi daw sila ulit pa sa yeah. kasi si Ham Kasi may verse doon, Pastor, sa Genesis chapter 6 and also after that. After that. Yeah. Ibig sabihin, Pastor, sa Genesis 6 pa lang, tumalun yung history, mm. tapos bumalik. Tama yan. Tama. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yung also after that, yung mm. after the flood. No? After the flood. And after that. Okay, bro. Amen. Kasi nga, makita mo, may giants pa rin natin. Hanggang sa, kaya nga yung si, ano, si Christ, Ang pinaka typology niya diyan si David, di ba? So sino yung pinatay ni David? Actually sa panahon pa lang ni Joshua, typology na si Kristo eh. Tapos pagdating kay ano, you know, kay uh, David, may typology na naman, di ba? Ano yon? May mga giants sa lupit daw. And David killed them. Joshua killed them. Caleb killed them. Oh, enemy sila ng Diyos. Alright? Okay. So, it's really, you know, it's really, we, we, cannot, we cannot really, it's hard to comprehend, pero siyempre, with our knowledge of the Bible, siyempre, we have to dig more of the Bible to understand more about it. Pero as for now, yun po ang ating nakikita ng knowledge to. Alright? So, information also. Okay po. So I think that's uh that's good enough for tonight. Amen. So all right, so Lana Brad. Lana. Okay, let's close in prayer. Brother Mike again. Let's call our prayer La Talaga. Brother June. Sige po, tayo pong lahat ay manalangin. Sa ating closing prayer. Let's pray. Dakilang Diyos, Ama. Maraming salamat po, Diyos, sa kabutihan mo in giving us this knowledge. Thank you so much, Lord. Allow us, Lord, na ma-cherish po ito mga knowledge nito at hindi po ito maging knowledge power up. Yeah. Lord, give us uh, humility while we are learning and as we go deeper, Lord, give us a uh, humbleness of heart so we can yes. share this to others and be a uh, knowledge so we can be nourished up in our Christian life. Amen. Lord, thank you so much also for using Pastor Jonathan Pascual as a channel of blessing for teaching us the word of truth, which is the word of God, our King James Bible. Lord, salamat din po for the topic that you have given to us and for the enlightenment yes, that we Lord. have received to, tonight. And Lord, we also pray to mga nalaman namin, nalaman namin Panginoon, ay we can, will be able to share to others at ito po ay maging kaalaman po sa lahat po ng tao. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat Lord for the entire time that we spent uh, studying together Lord. We also pray Lord para po sa araw po ng bukas sa aming uh, Worship service yes, and other Lord. Christians na mag-worship service, Lord. Bless us tomorrow, Lord, and give us a good rest tonight. And bless the people who participate this Bible study, Lord. We also pray, Lord, for the real KJB believers. Amen. Continue bl bless this platform, O oh Lord, and protect this platform from uh, evil people na magde-destroy yes. ang faith po ng mga simple yes, which once delivered unto the saints. Salamat po, Panginoon Diyos. Ito po aming dalangin sa tanging pangalan po ng aming Panginoong Jesus, na aming Panginoon na tagapagligtas. Amen, amen, amen. 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 amen.
Once again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Real KGB believers now signing off. Signing off. Signing off. Salamat po sa puto. Amen. So, asan na yung puto?